The Channel 4 comedy drama Shameless, focused on the lives of a family living in a council house with an unemployed alcoholic father with criminal tendencies. 20 grand owed on his visa, another 12 on a new car, two on a plasma, four on a fortnight in Dubai. Hello, Sunkis. Three different addresses. And Frank's details on them all. It won a BAFTA and gained a cult following. But for some, it reinforced the stereotypes that if you live in a council house, you're a certain type of person. The person that commits antisocial behaviour, um, the person with 12 children, you know, living on benefits. Um, there are lots of, unfortunately, negative perceptions of tenants who are criminals, who are non-educated. Um, and, you know, that just is not the case and it really frustrates me. Sarita's part of a campaign group called Benefit to Society. It aims to challenge stereotypes and stigma and give tenants a positive voice. Hi, my name's Sarita Marie and I've been a community activist for almost 30 years now. I've always been involved in community projects and initiatives. Um, I'm a parent governor and I'm also a mother and a grandmother. And in my spare time, I like writing poetry. Stigma doesn't just affect the social housing tenant. People who can't get a council property and are on benefits can be discriminated against by landlords. Rosie Keogh from Birmingham was refused a rental property on that basis by a lettings agency. I just felt humiliated. I felt cross and just frustrated because I was trying to move um, for the sake of my little boy's health and I was being prevented from doing that. So you've been renting for 12 years in this house. Um, have you ever not paid your rent? No, I've paid my rent in full and on time each month. And they knew that. I told them I'd been renting my current home for that period of time. The housing charity Shelter helped Rosie take the lettings agency Nicholas George to court. She won an out-of-court settlement of £2,000 on the grounds of sex discrimination. We've had a few years now of the, the media and some politicians pointing at people on benefits and saying that in some way they're second class or doing something wrong. I think that does get through to people, but I think that increasingly people are looking at that kind of way of behaving and practicing and saying, we don't want that in this country. We want to treat everybody in the same way and equally. Uh, and that means getting rid of these no DSS practices in the housing sector. I think that housing benefit claimants are all treated with contempt. We're just treated differently compared to everybody else. Why is that, do you think? There's a stereotype, isn't there, that housing benefit claimants are expected to conform to. So I'm expected to be somebody that doesn't pay my rent on time, or I am somebody that's going to cause damage to the home that I'm living in, or I'm going to annoy the neighbours. Uh, you know, it's endless, the list. Five million people receive housing benefit and 40% of landlords won't rent a property to them, which means their choices are limited. At last year's Tory party conference, Theresa May promised that more money would be made available to build new homes. Today, I can announce that we will invest an additional £2 billion in affordable housing, taking the government's total affordable housing budget to almost £9 billion. In my opinion, that's merely chicken feed, and we still don't know how much of that £2 billion is for social housing um, and how much is for affordable housing. And there's a difference, Jane, between um, affordable and social housing. Affordable housing is 80% of the market rate. You know, that might be affordable for, for you, but not affordable for me, or vice versa. In the last 20 years, we've had 14 housing ministers and many, many photo opportunities with politicians on building sites, but still nowhere near enough homes to go round. Currently, there are 1.8 million people on the social housing waiting list. Jane Hesketh, ITV News.